Thank you very much indeed. Um, I would just like to take this opportunity now to welcome one of the legends of Irish music, Mr. Jim Lockhart, to come to the stage for the first of a series of readings that are happening tonight. Thank you very much, Lily. It's very gratifying to be introduced in such glowing terms by a proper musician, whose <laughs> first name terms with minor ninths and whatnot. Um, anyway, ex extract number one. I think it's always flattering that people find your previous work interesting for a number of years, John McLaughlin suggested, several years after the Mahavishnu Orchestra, batting away yet another question on the subject. Any artist has delusions of immortality. My personal view is that when it's finished, it's done. There's nothing you can do with it anymore. What's important is today. If I have a concert tonight, it's the most important concert in the world. If you have an audience, whether it's 10 or 10,000, it's still an audience. Uh, if you have one person listening, that's just as important. The success of Mahavishnu was something even I didn't understand. The Mahavishnu Orchestra were like mercury, flaming under glass for a moment and then gone. The moment, though, did last a couple of years, and the memory of its radiance would be presented back to John for discussion by every interviewer he ever met. Many years after his commentary above, John, aged 70, was asked again why he thought the Mahavishnu Orchestra had been so extraordinarily successful. I don't know, maybe because we were the loudest, fastest band in the world, he suggested deftly closing the subject down and getting back to talking about his latest record. If nothing else, it saved time. <laughs> a softly spoken man in a white suit with an exotic, an exotic instrument, a curious perambulating accent, a military haircut, and an approach to personal hygiene, health of mind and body, and a consistently, eloquently, fervently expressed sense of purpose deriving from Eastern religion would ordinarily have been sidelined as just one more eccentric in an age of innocence when almost everyone else in rock, performers and audience alike, were rebelling by looking, sounding and smelling more or less the same. <laughs> Mahavishnu John McLaughlin could not be sidelined or ignored. He was clearly operating on a level far beyond any of his bedenimed peers. He was patently not a buffoon and he maintained for a magical few years an almost implausibly huge popular audience. He entertained and inspired the masses with an artistry that remains the highest in the whole history of rock music. He never lost that audience. He just walked away when the music had exhausted itself. John, so critical of his own playing, a perfectionist, Jimi Hendrix had once said. John would be the first to agree. Sometimes I'm very jealous of these people who find their thing and they can just lay with it he mused once. I must seem very restless to these people, but at the same time, I know that's part of my nature and I've accepted that. At the same time, it gave me headaches because I'm restless, because I'm looking for new forms. And of course, we can go on forever looking for new forms. Fortunately, in music, you can go on forever, and I will die looking for new forms. Sri Chinmoy had a thing called the ever transcending beyond says Carol Shive, who is second violinist in the second Mahavishnu Orchestra. Maybe that's one thing that John liked about that philosophy because that's the way John was, the ever transcending beyond. As soon as he would experiment fully with something, he would move on to the next thing. As soon as the second Mahavishnu Orchestra was over, he moved on to Shakti. And soon after that, etc., etc., just going further and further. Some people are meant to be in one life, one marriage, and be happy with it. And some other souls are not meant for that. You can never get to the end, John admitted in 2013. The whole point of music is to be who you are. And really, this is the point of life, isn't it? The minute we think we know something, then we're even more stupid than we thought. It's taken me 70 years to realize that I know almost nothing. So many of us have to spend great swathes of our lives in pointless jobs, tolerating mediocrity and the deification of process over purpose, uniformity over creativity. The Roman Empire fell into ruin through decadence. Modern life sleepwalked into a torpor of widespread disappointment. Somehow, John McLaughlin beat the system. 
He never believed that what he aspired to was out of reach, and therefore it wasn't. He has embraced positivity, delight at the miracle of being alive, perpetual excitement at the possibilities of tomorrow, when so many of us see only obligations, struggles, and a flat horizon. He had discipline equal to his almost impossible dreams. The Mahavishnu Orchestra was nothing less than a triumph of the will.